Hey there, beloved of God. Welcome to this video. This is number six of our series called The Eras of the Nations. We continue immediately with our slides. Uh, and I suspect this is going to be the last one, maybe even a bit longer, maybe not. Let's see what, hap what happens. So this was the last slide. Let's look at, um, at an interesting prophecy where all the four animals <laughs> mentioned in Daniel are represented. That's a prophecy in Hosea 13, verse 4 to 8, through 8. Let's read. Yet I am Yahweh, your Elohim. I brought you up from the land of Egypt. You shall not know an Elohim except me, and there is no Savior unless it is I. I graced you in the wilderness, in the land of searing drought. In accord with their pasture, they were satisfied. They were satisfied, and their heart was exalted. Therefore they forgot me. So I shall become to them like a black lion like a leopard i shall lie in wait along the way um, i shall lie in wait no i shall lie in wait along the way sorry i shall encounter them like a bereaved bear and i shall tear the enclosure of their heart and devour them like a parent lion the wild animal of the field it shall rent them so there is something huge to await israel and we know what it is that is the great tribulation or the great affliction so um uh, let's see so you you see the four animals here of daniel uh, out of daniel 7 lion leopard bear and the fourth beast the fourth nondescript beast so this is very interesting right and this is already mentioned but now i think in the end times all four animals these monstrous animals in daniel 7 will now Converge. They will be coming uh, together in the end times in one composite beast, a wild beast out of the sea, which is again a heathen or a Gentile system with one leader, with one specific leader. Let's read about that and see the similarities. So, we're, look, we're going to look at parallels with the wild beast in Revelation 13. The characteristics of, this, of these animals in Daniel 7 are more or less merged into one composite beast in the end times. See Revelation 13, 1 to 2. And I observed a wild beast ascending out of the sea, having ten horns, which is part of the fourth animal remember that one seven heads so these are all the heads of the four animals um, uh, added up the first animal the lion the second animal the bear uh, the, the she bear sorry the second animal the, the third animal with four heads remember the leopardess and the fourth animal with one head but ten horns so the ten horns are mentioned here. Seven heads are mentioned here. On its horns, uh, there are ten diadems. These are sort of crowns that signify dominion, rulership. And on its heads, there are blasphemous names on its seven heads. I want to notice, I want you also to notice... That, and I, I've, I've never heard this earlier from any scholar or teacher or whatever. Uh, I just note, noticed it and uh, nobody has talked about it up till now. And I don't know what the meaning is, but let me mention it. So this beast has 
ten horns and seven heads, and on its uh, sorry, and on its horns, on its horns, it has ten diadems. Meaning, I would say on each horn a diadem, right? But if you compare this beast with the dragon in the previous chapter of Revelation, meaning Revelation 12, that dragon, that fiery drag, fiery red dragon, has also seven heads and ten horns, but it has the diadems on its heads. So there are seven diadems on the heads, while the beast has and in any, any case, the diadems on its horns. So, uh, of course, this, this difference is not for naught. It has a reason. But I didn't really discover the reason yet. So, if you have uh, a suggestion or if you have options, please let me know. You know how to reach me. It is always nice to learn from each other. So, I found two depictions that re more or less resemble that beast let's look at it this one i like this one on the one hand the most because you can see the total of the beast including it's the claws the 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 feet of the she bear you see that it's a leopard but it has the mouth the mouth of a lion and uh, the horns are I don't like because it has four I think four diadems here and here on every small horn it has a diadem and there are two horns here extra no I don't like this one in terms of the horns I like the next one better but then you don't see the feet this one this one is better I think this is like a leopard uh, with the uh, mouth of a lion, the claws of, or the, the, the feet of the she bear, and you see all the ten horns, and every horn has its own diadem. I think this is, this is more representative in terms of the horns. Okay, we continue. So, uh, the wild beast, which I, John, perceived, looked watch this now looked like a leopardess which is the third animal in daniel 7 and its feet were as a bear's the she bear the second animal in daniel 7 and its mouth as the mouth of a lion the first animal in daniel 7 okay and the dragon gives it, gives it, the beast, its power and its throne and great authority. Not only religious, but also political authority, obviously. The two will become, uh, they will converge into one system and one leader on top of that system. So, as I said earlier in an earlier vlog in this series, that in the end time, everything converges back again. One language through technology, remember, and in the fourth eon, the earth will become one continent again. And that process will happen at the end of the end times uh, uh, and, and through at least three, at least three different earthquakes and of which the last one will be by far the, the greatest earthquake ever. Okay, so let's continue. The beast in Revelation 13 is the union of both religious and political global power. Let me take a sip quickly. Okay, given the description like a leopard is, so the beast as such, its essence, is like a leopardess, meaning it will predominantly in its essence be a Islamic system. And probably the leader will be an Assyrian leader with at least Assyrian roots. Let me tell let me say it like that. So it will be uh, I think 
predominantly an Islamic system with aspects of Buddhism. Look at the mouth of a lion. Hinduism, the feet of a she-bear. And Christianity, the ten horns with ten diadems. However, however, however. Horns, as I already mentioned, I want you to just remember these things. Horns are always a type, a sign of um, a power in terms of weaponry. So armors, armored power, armed power. Is that the word? So we have to take that very much into consideration here. So Christianity, so the Christian Western powers who are by far the most advanced in, in arms and in, in weaponry, the most advanced by far, these powers are also part of this end time system. That's what I think. If it is all powers that I don't know, but there will be uh, Christian powers, powers with a Christian root, so, so to speak. Okay, the second beast, because in Revelation 13 verse 11, there's also mention of a second beast with two horns like a lamb, looking like a lamb, but speaking like a dragon. That is the what they call the false prophet or the pseudo prophet. And he will be the one who will promoting the first beast. The, the one with more like political and also religious power. So... Uh, that is very important. The second beast will also be the one who will predominantly do great miracles, great signs to deceive all the nations. And also, so he will, he will make fire fall from uh, heaven or the skies. And uh, he will uh, make sure that everyone will have, everyone who wants to take it, will receive the mark of the beast. It will be the second beast who will who will be the the project manager of that project so to speak however all this greatness quote unquote of course must also be financed so the great prostitute enters the scene revelation 17 verse 3 my question would be why was John's wonder, John's amazement, so great? In verse 6 you can read that. Because his, his, he was marveling and his marvel was great. Scripture says, why when perceiving the woman? Why? I have a vision on, or, or a viewpoint on it. Let's see. In my opinion, the woman consists of rich Jews who have invested in the city and building up of the city of Babylon with the goal of worldwide trade in everything with everyone and everything that that in entails, such as decadence, and idolatry and slavery okay so i think the prostitute is the apostate jews and that is a contrast to the woman clothed with the sun in revelation 12 verse 1 which are believing jews faithful jews that's what i think believing Israel so to speak so we continue at first the beast the religious and political system is ruled by the woman of course the big money of the rich Jews but later the kings they they get tired of her so the kings of this beast the ten kings and the king its king they get tired of her res resulting in destruction. The ten kings will have one opinion, what do you know, and give their power to the beast, obviously at the hands of the God. 
because for 10 kings to have one opinion that is practically impossible humanly speaking it's god who can make that happen and he will make that happen so uh they will they will rule this king uh, this these 10 kings will rule for one hour and then they will give their power to the bees that's how i see it currently in the end great babylon is utterly destroyed and never to be restored again as i mentioned for the first and last time so now we are now we are going to stroll towards the end of this series so let's look at the end of the dream first the, the end, end in the dream daniel told nebuchadnezzar you were perceiving until a stone was severed from a mountain not by hands and it collided with the image at its feet of iron and clay and pulverized them then all at once the iron the clay the copper the silver and the gold were pulverized and became as chaff from summer threshing sites and the wind lifted them up and no trace at all was found of them and the stone that collided with the image became a vast mountain range and filled the, the, filled the whole earth. Daniel 2, 34, 35. Just to mention it, I mentioned in an earlier vlog that these were this uh, order of materials were reversed, remember? But now, hopefully, we know why. Because the gold was mentioned last here, that was, that was pulverized. Because Babylon will be uh, destroyed in the end of the end times. So Babylon will be last, so to speak, to be destroyed. So just for you to to recall and to see the bigger picture behind it so that's why also you you can see the order here of the materials reversed okay and th let's read this one in their days that is of these kings the eloah of the heavens shall, shall set up a kingdom this is the interpretation of the dream Eloah shall set up a kingdom that for the eons shall not come to harm, nor shall his kingdom be left to another people. It shall pulverize and terminate all these kingdoms, and it shall stand for the eons. Daniel 2.44 So, first we looked at the end in the dream, then the end in uh, in terms of the interpretation of the dream and now we are going to be looking at the end in the revealed reality so the revelation given to john first revelation 16 21 and hail large as a talent weight is descending out of heaven on mankind and man blaspheme god as a result of the calamity of hail for great is its calamity, tremendous. Now you understand, hopefully, why um, the armies of uh, this beast will be, um, they will be crushed. They will be crushed like wines, uh, ripe grapes in a wine trough. That's something I said, right? Because if you look at hail large as a talent weight, if that falls on you, what is a talent? What's the weight of a talent? I have uh, looked it up. In Dutch, uh, I didn't really um, said it correctly. But here, I think it's 35 kilo, uh, uh, kilos so something like 75 pounds in american pounds something like that so if one hailstone only one is falling on someone 
I think that person is dead immediately. That person is crushed. Because don't forget that if it falls from heaven, the speed increases at which it falls. So by the time it hits earth or its target on earth, oh my goodness, that will be terrible. And there will be like a hail storm. It descends on, on mankind, on the armies of the beast. So can you imagine what will happen? So I will not, I will not mention the gory details. Let's read Revelation 19.15. And out of his, and that's Jesus Christ, the one on the, on the, uh, what is the one? What's the, uh, anyway, we, we, we're going to come to that. And out of his mouth, a sharp blade is issuing that with it, he should be smiting the nations and he will be shepherding them with an iron club. And he is treading the wine throw of the fury of the indignation of God the Almighty. So he is going to make the talents, uh, sorry, the hail fall. The hail of which every stone is a talent weight. <laughs> so treading the wine throw. Wow. It's going to be something else. Uh, this is what I wanted to say here. His is also him who is sitting on the horse. And here you can see it. Let's read Revelation 19, verse 19 to 21. And I perceive the wild beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to do battle with him <laughs> who is sitting on the horse and with his army. That's laughable. And the wild beast is arrested and with it the false prophet, who does the signs in its sight, by which he deceives those getting the emblem of the wild beast and those worshipping its image. Lifting, the two were cast into the lake of fire burning with sulfur, and the rest, they were killed with the blade which is coming out of the mouth of him who is sitting on the horse, and all the birds are satisfied with their flesh. And that will be the absolute end of this eon as such. Then the armies of the enemy are totally destroyed. And of course, the enemy, the adversary, Satan, will also be grabbed by an angel with a, with a large chain. And he will, thrown, he will be thrown in the abyss where he has to be for a thousand years. So let's go toward the end. So of course, we will also see a return of God's glory, Shekinah. Of course. So let's read that also in Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 1 to 2. Then he conducted me to a gate the gate facing east, and behold, the glory of the Elohim of Israel came from the east again. You see the structure of God, right? It went away uh, also to the east, upwards, and now it comes back from the east. And his voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth was enlightened by his glory. So the Shekinah glory of Yahweh left Jerusalem to the east, the Mount of Olive, when the temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And, and now, at the beginning of the next eon, the Shekinah glory of Yahweh will return to Jerusalem from the east when the millennial temple is completed. That will be a great, great moment of joy for all of the people of Israel who are, of course, um, going to rule and reign with Christ in the millennial kingdom. So, a little we will end this show with a little a flavor of the millennium kingdom, 
a slight impression. Let's read Jeremiah 31, 34 first. No longer shall they, Israel, teach each man his associate and each man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh. No, for they all shall know me. And uh, from the smallest of them to the greatest of them, affirming is Yahweh. For I shall pardon their depravity, and I shall not remember their sin any longer. And also in Isaiah 2 verse 3, regarding the nations uh, in the millennial kingdom, many people will come and say, Come, let us ascend to the mount of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and he shall direct us out of his ways, so that we may indeed walk in his paths, for from Zion shall go forth the, the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. So at the end of the millennial, king, millennial kingdom, everyone will know Yahweh at least to the extent he wants to be known. Take that also with you. Because you know how the fourth eon will end. It will end with a revolt again. But that will not uh, endure very long. Well, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.